what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here in this video i'm going to be talking about the chances of us having skeet Ulrich back in the role of billy loomis in screen five the chances of us having a missing third killer of course from the original film that's been speculated for several years and also the chance of us finally having a killer uh get away with it in screen five and then that the that killer or these killers being our antagonist of course in scream six uh, they carry on to plan out a sequel uh, getting into things off the bat i want to talk about that third killer theory a lot of people have uh, brought to my attention I've, I've known about it for quite some time but several people in the comment section just been talking about it so i want to make a video on it regarding the fact that yes in screen there's a lot of things that don't really add up in regards to us finding out that it's just a duo of killers and not a trio several instances in screen suggested there's three killers not just two uh one specific instance for example is when sydney prescott after she gets done having sex with billy loomis for the very first time she is billy loomis is attacked from behind by ghostface who we would assume is Stu mocker it could have been someone else after i'm after what i'm about to say of course and i'm sure everyone else is aware of this she locks ghostface in the room with billy loomis who is left left to be dying as he's bleeding out as he fell down on the bed she locks ghostface, ghostface in the room with billy but yet when she's running towards the downstairs area from across the stairway uh, on another set of stairs there's another ghost face running down them to cut her off of the pass she turns around and then runs back upstairs and we know she slams the door in ghost face's face if Stu and and billy were both locked in that room or if a ghost face and billy were locked in that room who was this other killer that was downstairs waiting for her that came running out of the woodwork waiting waiting for her that's the most uh apparent thing that suggested there's three killers that were going that were going running around in the original film not just two uh, a lot of people have been speculating that that might have been dewey i'm going to nix that right in the bud there no it was not dewey i do not hope it to be dewey i hope we don't find out anything regarding dewey and his possible ties as being a third killer in the original film not dewey not gail weathers uh i'm gonna go out and say it was probably a as you see in the thumbnail where i have whether or not billy loomis had a potential new love interest aside from sydney because in the first movie we know that he was still with sydney from what i what, from what i've gathered and what i've assumed and f watching the movie multiple times and of course just watching it on one viewing one would assume that he just stayed with her for for manipulative purposes and just what wanted to stay with her to of course maybe he wanted to try to ignore the fact that her her mom killed killed his mother or not killed his mother but her mom was the reason for their parents splitting up maybe he wanted to ignore it at first but then he stuck around for manipulative reasons because he was planning a a killing spree that was going to occur re regarding herself and her father who we know they wanted the father to take like the uh take the fall for everything i i really don't know i don't understand myself why billy loomis stuck with sydney afterwards uh i'm going to say it was just for manipulative reasons but this whole time when he was with her who's to say that he didn't have someone else who he actually had actual genuine feelings for nowhere in in the first screen film do i believe dewey or not dewey but billy loomis rather i don't believe he actually had any feelings for her anymore after finding out that he was the killer i don't believe he had any feelings for her i believe he was just with her for the sake of being with her because it was just something that he was already doing and of course just for manipulative reasons because he was always going to plan to get back at her and take his uh, anger out towards his mother on her um, again getting back to what I want to get to though this new love interest could have been the one assisting him in Stu while he was still dating Sydney he could have been hooking up with another another girl another girl who he was also manipulating another girl who might have had a crush on him for a long period of time and Billy of course took note of that started dating the girl the girl took the girl was very aware that he was with sydney prescott still they didn't care because they were like an outcast in high school they didn't have too many friends but they had a big crush on billy loomis uh might have had a few classes with billy loomis billy loomis just basically capitalized on the opportunity probably thought the girl was a little cute something different from sydney and they just started he just started a new relationship up with this girl Sydney, of course, never found out about this. And those of you who've seen my Judy Hicks theory video, I'm going to go ahead and say this girl was Judy Hicks. A lot of other people have left that thought down in the comment section in my comment sections regarding Judy Hicks possibly being a love interest of Billy or Stu, and she was the third killer in the screen film. I'm I'm going to go out and say Judy Hicks was a secret lover or the secret boyfriend 
not of Stu Mocker this time. I've already made that theory video. She was a secret lover of Billy Loomis. And she was the one who was assisting them in the in the original film. She was being she was being manipulated by Billy for the most part. At the same time, she did care for him and she understood why he why he was so angry and frustrated because of what Sydney's mother had done. But she at the same time was not really all the way down with it. She only helped Billy and Stu mostly because the same reason Stu did. Because Billy Billy was very manipulative, peer pressure, variety of other things that went on in Billy Loomis's head. And of course for the simple fact that she loved him and she didn't she didn't want she wanted to help her lover, uh, who was very heartbroken over his parents splitting up. Um Judy Hicks several years later, of course. We wouldn't, I don't want us to find out that it's Judy Hicks in Scream 5. I want to save that for Scream 6. In Scream 5, I'd like us to once again be following Kirby Reed, of course, who I want to be another leading lady alongside Nev Campbell returning to play Sidney Prescott. And let's find out that, make the story about Kirby Reed somewhat. Uh, she's returning to Woodsboro to investigate a series of murders, the first murder, and one of the murders I want to be the one to draw her back into town would be the opening kill that I've made mention of involving her mother, where her mother has died, and of course she's going to come investigate that or want to assist with that or be brought into town for questioning since it is regarding her mother. Uh, we find out Kirby has a boyfriend, a boyfriend she's been with for the past, let's say, year or so, and then in the end, we find out that this boyfriend is actually the brother of Stu Mocker. The brother of Stu Mocker, who wants to get back at the town of Woodsboro, uh, he wanted to get back at Kirby's mother because Kirby's mother possibly found out that he was Stu Mocker's brother and she was going to tell Kirby about this. And he didn't, he he took care of that and nipped that in the bud uh, very, very quickly. And he also might have had some things going on in his personal life in the relationship with him and Kirby that he was just not satisfied with. And then, of course, to get back at Sidney Prescott because Sidney Prescott might be responsible. He blames Sidney Prescott for, let's say, some childhood trauma he had growing up with his parents not being able to get over the death of his older brother. He had to watch his parents deteriorate mentally. And that, of course, had an effect on him because his parents, let's let's say Stu's parents, uh, one day they just decided to commit suicide. And that left him abandoned. And he, he grew up in foster care. Just a whole ordeal they could come up with with Stu's surprise brother that we'd find out about who who i will add was born after his death so that's why no one would ever make mention of him that would explain why we never heard about him he was born after Stu's death um but then getting into that we could have multiple killers in scream five but we wouldn't find out all three killers because again i want to have three killers for the first time we would find out all three killers uh that they exist but not find out their identities in scream five we find out that at least Stu's brother is going to be caught and then we throughout the movie the filmmakers can kind of toy with the fact that we've gotten several shots of things hinting at us having multiple killers us having all these different shots that we've seen that are a callback to the the first two movies of course and the fourth movie where we had multiple killers they're kind of toying with us and playing with our mind to let us know that hey there's multiple killers again but then in the end we only find out that there's one and we're like wait hey wait a minute that doesn't make sense how can it be just one that's all we get we literally find out it's just Stu's brother and then at the very end just when we think that something isn't adding up or that the filmmakers must have forgotten something at the very end that's when we find out there's two other killers that have been that are waiting and they're going to be planning out the events that occur in scream six the two people who were helping uh, Stu's brother in Screen 5. One, of course, would be Judy Hicks, who's going to be revealed as uh, one of the killers in Scream 6 and an accomplice of Stu's brother, who's also going to be revealed as another who's going to expose her backstory and her involvement in the original Woodsboro killings and her backstory and her love interest and the relationship she had with Billy Loomis while Billy Loomis was still dating Sidney Prescott um, and how she blamed Sidney Prescott for the death of her lover, things like that, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Uh, Stu's brother, I believe, is the most interesting part out of all this so far for a lot of you listening. Uh, but then, of course, getting into Skeet Ulrich possibly appearing. He recently left Riverdale, so I think there's a good chance we could see him come back. Um, he left Riverdale recently just stating that he felt that creatively the, the series wasn't hitting with him anymore, so there was nothing really left for him to do on that show. 
So there's a good chance we could see him in some capacity. Of course, Billy Loomis is dead. He doesn't have to come back and be alive. They could still work a way in for Skeet Ulrich to make an appearance as Billy Loomis in Scream 5. And then jumping into, of course, I want us to again, of course, have for the first time ever a killer get away with it. And when I say I want us to have a killer get away with it, it doesn't necessarily have to mean we find out who they are. Because again, I made mention of the fact that two other killers could be uh that could be the ending plot to us of screen five we find out that there's two other killers who were assisting Stu's brother uh and they're going to be saved for scream six uh and then in scream six we find out who they are and everything all we need to find out in screen five is that two other killers were involved in it but they got away because one of them took the fall for all three uh and then of course in scream six we get our big finale the final chapter in this new trilogy Kirby, Sydney, whoever else that the supporting cast of they need to come up with some new characters. Some new characters need to be around for this. Make it about them. If you want to continue the series past Scream 6, you got to have some supporting cast members that aren't just killed off and we just have this revolving door of us getting the original trio back. Um, but let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.